Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel. Today we're looking at the remaining cards that got revealed that are going to be featured within the Night Wanderer set. That is going to be a part of our Shrouded Fable set, which does come out in August. So we did get the remaining cards in this set reveal. We've already seen most of the new cards, like we sang the Loyal 3 stuff already and everything. But we are now going to be looking at the remaining cards within the set and uh, seeing what else got revealed. We got a brand new EX, a new stadium that actually looks pretty decent, not going to lie. And there are some other new Evolution Pokemon, a few other cards that got revealed over the past couple days also that I also just haven't looked at yet. So I'm excited to look at all these new cards here and see what else got revealed in the Night Wander set because we are going to begin these cards within August. And if y'all are new here to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We're on the road to 15k subs. I'll leave a link to Poke Beach here, um, the site I'm using to look at all of the scans and trans translations we're going to scroll down here to the card so the first one is we actually got a brand new galvantula revealed here which isn't a bad card it's decent it does have the ability compound eyes if your opponent's active pokemon has an ability then uh, attacks by this pokemon will do 50 more damage to your opponent's active pokemon you're going to be doing 130 damage with shocking web which basically does 50 and then if you have a lightning energy on it, it does 80 more damage so you need a grass and a lightning to do 130 but of course you're doing 180 damage to a pokemon with an ability it's not terrible numbers that does one hit ko charizard x as charizard x does have an ability so you will knock out charizard this could be a cool reversal energy style attacker you do need a grass and a lightning energy but it's not a bad little stage one pokemon if you're playing a stage one toolbox style deck this could be good this card might have been a lot better if uh zork still existed but uh alas zork is gone uh, we've already seen the new Decidueye line. We did get a new Tapu Bulu here. Uh, it does have the attack Woodhammer doing 220 damage. This Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. It's a pretty vanilla attacker. I mean, doesn't really do anything special. There isn't really any good grass ex energy acceleration like there was before. Basically, this card would have been really good with Cherim is what I'm trying to say. I mean, you couldn't really play this with... I mean, I guess you could use Gardenia and like Ogre Pond, but it's like not as good. I mean, Cherim, Tapu Bulu actually would have been decent this card is 220 damage that's pretty okay damage that it could have done so it's unfortunate this card came out when uh, charim already rotated this actually would have been a really good partner with charim so that's unfortunate they should have put this out in paradox rift that's kind of sad but uh you know it is what it is uh new hound doom here has the attack snarl does 100 damage during your opponent's next turn the defending pokemon's attacks do 100 less damage that's a pretty interesting effect actually i mean there are pokemon out there that don't do like a ton of damage already like even something like charizard sometimes at the beginning of the game it's only doing 180 damage you can force the charizard to do 80 damage with its attack you can make dragapult do 100 damage with its attack so this is actually a pretty cool attack um you'd probably have to play it with like a way to like prevent the opponent from switching out super easily because your opponent would be able to like move out of the active spot and then the effect is gone it is an interesting attack effect though houndoom is just a little too weak though to maybe work i mean i guess you could play with like hero's cape make it even bulkier make the houndoom really hard to knock out so maybe there's like a fun little uh, bad deck friday deck in the works here with this houndoom it's got an interesting attack right that is a cool attack we haven't seen like that in a while on a card and 100 less damage that is a lot of damage reduction i've already looked at the new kingdra of course uh, we did get a new weavile here with the attack hail claw for two water energy does semi damage discard all energy from his pokemon and your opponent's active pokemon is now paralyzed i mean paralysis isn't bad obviously it's a pretty good special condition to affect your opponent with but the Weavile just kind of doesn't do a lot. I mean, 70 damage is a little weak. You're a stage one Pokemon. The one thing with the Articuno that does this, like, a very similar thing is that Articuno is a basic Pokemon. Being a stage one, I don't think the Weavile is worth it. You can use Baxcalibur to put energy on it, I guess, to attack and paralyze every turn. But honestly, relying on Paralysis right now isn't really the greatest strategy. To be honest, there's Toro Switch, Penny in the format. I mean, we're also getting... Um, one of the new Loyal 3 EXs that, like, has an ability where you can switch it out in the active. So, probably not the most playable card ever. Uh, but here is the brand new EX, the Reverum EX. Yeah, we got another Reverum EX. We now have two Reverum EXs in the format. It does have two attacks. It is a Lightning-type Pokemon that does require Metal Energy. And I think Pokemon designed this card to literally be specifically about KOing pokemon with 280 hp that happen to be weak to lightning and oh there's quite a few of those in the format so it's got the attack accelerating flash which for one metal energy 
does 20 damage, and if it moves from the bench to the act of this turn, it does 120 more damage. It's very similar to the old Galissapod at GX that did the same thing, where you move it um, from the bench to the active, and then it does a bunch of damage, and it does 140 damage, which you can kind of see why Pokemon made this card. It literally does the perfect amount of damage to knock out Pokemon like Pidgeot EX and Lugia V-Star. Now, it is decent, not gonna lie. I mean, it is nice having a way to KO those Pokemon, especially when Pidgeot is one of the main you know centerpiece engines of a deck being able to just immediately knock it out is nice to do um now red room does need a metal energy you're probably gonna have to play this in some kind of like metal focused deck uh the best deck i can think that could play this is goldango uh, a lot of the goldango this uh that were winning already we're playing a 1-1 one, one River Room. Uh, the River Room from Scarlet and Violet base set that lets you discard energy and then drop TF6. That River Room is already in the Goldengo deck, so maybe if you want to put this in your deck, you could. You could theoretically play this River Room in your Goldengo deck. And then you have a Lightning-type attacker that can take out Pidgeot EX immediately instead of having to knock it out with Goldengo, which you can do, obviously. It's not that hard. Uh, but it's nice to have the, you know, attacker that can just knock it out. You can also knock out Lugia V-Star, which is nice. Um, there is something to it. Uh, I mean, it's fine. If you're going to build a deck around the other Rev Room EX, I can put a bunch of tool cards on it. Well, you now have another new Rev Room to partner it with and give you some decent type coverage against something like Pidgeot Lugia. And honestly, it's not that bad. I, I don't think it's terrible. It's nothing, you know, to write home about. I don't think the other attack is fantastic. It does three metals, does 250 damage, but then you have to discard this Pokemon and all cards attached to it. Pretty big downside. I mean, you already have to load this thing up, you know, manually. You might have the Matang to it. I mean, if you're going to play this card, you're probably going to have to build it up with Matang, obviously. Also, if you want to use that second attack, you have to play with Matang. But if you were to build a deck around the other Rev Room EX, you know, you could pair that Rev Room with this Rev Room, and then you get some type coverage against Pidgeot and stuff, which would help. I mean, if Pidgeot's going to see more play, it's nice to have, and it'll help a little bit more against Lugia, too. So, not a bad card. Nothing crazy, but, you know, it being a lightning type Pokemon, that for one energy can knock out big Pokemon like Lugia and Pidgeot, and actually does make it semi-playable. Um, then we got a new Hypno here with an interesting attack. Daydream does 80 damage during your opponent's next turn if they attach an energy card from their hand to the defending Pokemon, their turn ends. That's a pretty interesting effect. Being able to immediately end your opponent's turn for attaching energy is kind of good. Now, not every deck right now does need to attach energy. Um, obviously, something that can accelerate energy a bit easier, like Mirage Gate, Burning Darkness, stuff like that. Um, they all have, well, not Burning Darkness, Infernal Rain, whatever Charizard EX's ability is called. Um, any ability that can get energy into play or effect of a card that doesn't require to attach from hand, you know, Hypno does block. But there are decks that will need to attach from hand. I mean, Dragapult needs to do that. And the only downside with Hypno, it's only the defending Pokemon. And this is where, and this Hypno gets a little worse, is the defending Pokemon, you know, if your opponent, you know, wants to, they can just put the Pokemon on the bench and attach energy to it. That's my issue with it. I don't think this Hypno is very good. Not to mention, they can attach, their turn will end, but then their next turn, they can attack you because, I mean, okay, they lost the turn, but whatever. So that's basically the downside with Hypno. I don't think it's very good. It could be like a funny control deck, maybe with like energy removal, but I mean, the fact is only def that if any Pokemon is the problem. If it was any Pokemon, I mean, maybe it'd be a bit too good, but that would be a, a little bit better, obviously. Um, new Cresselia here, uh, nothing too crazy, does Crescent Purge for 3 Psychic, does 80 damage, you can turn one of your face down prizes face up, and if you do, you do 80 more damage, and that card remains face up the rest of the game. I mean, not a bad attack, being able to see your prizes isn't terrible if you don't prize check very often. I don't think it's great though, I don't really think Gardevoir is going to play this card, doesn't really care too much to play it, I don't think, nothing to write home about. New Sylveon's also nothing to write home about, a lot of the cards that did get revealed aren't the greatest cards on the planet, uh, just mainly because they revealed all, like, the big good cards at the start of the set leak. Um, it does have Mystic Return for one Psychic. You flip a coin of heads, shuffle one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and all cards attached to it back into their deck. So that could be an annoying attack. You can force something onto the bench, and then you can put it back in the deck potentially. The problem is it's on a coin flip, and that's the, where the issues lie. Being on a coin flip, it does make this attack a little bit worse than it could be. Um... There's no coin flip reflip card in the format. There's really a good way to, you know, reflip and anything. So, unfortunately, I don't think the Sylveon is very good. Um, there's just better cards that can do, like, similar effects in the format anyways. I think there's a new Shiftry. Um, there's Golduck, which is, like, actually even got top 8 in online tournament recently. We got a new Toxicroak here. I don't think we've seen this yet. Does clean hit 90 damage if your opponent's active in evolution. 90 more damage. There you go. There's a big fighting po or big Pokemon this week to fighting in the format. That's an evolution. This uh, could be pretty good against it. Uh, other than that, kind of a mediocre attacker. If you want to play like a stage one toolbox with a versal energy, I guess there you go. You got your Toxicroak. You got your Galvantula. You got some type coverage. Um, we've seen all these new cards. Uh, we got new Absol here with Bad Fall for one colorless. Does 20 damage. If you have at least three dark energy in play, does 50 more damage. So you can do one for 70 
I mean, it's not terrible. Like, these type of, like, attacks aren't bad. I mean, Raging Bolt's playing Sandy Shocks, which has a very similar attack. There's more Peko that does 70 damage, too. Um, so, I mean, the Pokemon, like, early, like, basic Pokemon that could do low chip damage isn't bad. It does do enough damage to knock out low HP basics, but nothing to write home about. Depending on what Dark Deck you're playing, maybe they'll play a one of Absol. That's really about it. We did get a new Zoark here, which actually could be decent. It's got the attack Phantom Jack, which for two colorless energy does 60 damage for each of your opponent's EXs and V Pokemon in play. And that's not bad. I mean, this would have been pretty good in the Mew format, but uh, right now, you know, it's not terrible. There are decks out there that do tend to put a lot of V and EXs in play. A big one being a Raging Bolt. This new Zoark could be pretty good against Raging Bolt EX, because, I mean, that deck literally puts nothing but Vs or EXs and Vs in play. Yeah, Squawkabilly. You know, they'll put Mew down, they'll put the Teal Ogre Ponds in place. So the Zoar could actually be okay against that deck. Um, it's not a bad, you know, stage one attacker. It is a dark type Pokemon, so its type in is like okay, I guess. I mean, you're not really knocking out Gardevoir though, because they usually just have the one Gardevoir in play. Uh, it's not a bad attacker though. Depending on what deck you're playing against, mainly probably just Raging Bolt Ogre Pond, this Pokemon can be a nice stage one at Beat Stick Attacker. Um, it could be good against like big basic EX decks in general, because they tend to do put like a lot of EXs and stuff in play. Um, new Evil Tall here. Nothing crazy. Does have nine wins for one Dark Energy. You put two damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon that already have damage counters on them. So it's kind of like the Miss Magius where you can spread 20 damage across the board. Um, the problem with Evil Tall, though, is, uh, they already have to have damage counters on them. So you already have to find a way to get damage on them in the first place. It's only 20 damage anyways, so at most, you know, 30 damage you'll be putting on them. And then, of course, um... Evil Tall can be blocked by Jirachi, so I don't think this is, like, the greatest spread card on the planet. Um, yeah, if it put 20, if it was, like, Miss Megas' attack, it actually would have been a little bit better, but they already have to have damage counters on them, and that's the issue. Uh, we've already, of course, looked at the Loyal 3 EXs, looked at the Genesect. We got a new Kaparaja here, does have the ability Gargantuan Body. As long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, your opponent cannot play any stadiums from their hand. This could have been kind of fun with Path the Peak in the format, because you could have, pardon me, you could have put the Kaparaja in the active spot, and then just left it there, and then put a path in play. And they don't gust around it, well, the Kaparaja is allowed, basically going to stick the path, which is kind of cool. There are stadiums right now that could be okay to stick, like League Headquarters, uh, Jamming Tower could be annoying. It's got the attack Nose Lariat, does 130 damage. You can do 100 more damage if you do during your next turn. This Pokemon can't attack. Honestly, not a bad attacker. This obviously works with Matang, which is nice. You can build it up with Matang, does 230 damage, which is pretty relevant numbers. Play with Vitality Band, you're one-shotting Raging Bolt DXs. I don't think it's a bad card. Could be kind of fun to play with Matang as like a like little fun little rogue deck. That's basically all I can see is Kaparaja being good for. New Varum to go with the Reverum. Uh, we did get a new Hacks for his line here, which I haven't looked at yet. Um, but we got a new Fracture with Unnerve. Whenever your opponent plays an item or supporter from their hand, prevent all effects of that card down this Pokemon. So this card cannot be Prime Catchered or bossed out. Not bad. That's a pretty good ability. And then, of course, we got the Haxers here, which actually has an okay attack. It's got Axe Down. If your opponent's active Pokemon has any special energy cards attached to it, it is immediately knocked out. And then you got Dragon Pulse that is 230 damage, but you have to discard the top two cards of your deck. So not a bad attacker. You got the second attack, which can knock out big basics. And then you got the first attack, which can insta-KO something with a special energy on it. Now, this will be very strong against Lugia. So I'm pretty sure this actually bypasses gift energy and legacy energy's effect because you're not knocking them out with damage from an attack, which I'm pretty sure those cards do state needs to be done. So yeah, this Haxorus actually isn't that bad at all. Definitely a playable card. Um, it's got a decent fracture that can't be gusted out, which is nice. Um, yeah, not bad. I mean, depending on how popular Lugia is when this card comes out, this could be good against Lugia. Other special energy do exist. Double Turbo, obviously, is one that does exist, too. There's others out there, like Luminous Energy, um, stuff like that. So, Reversal Energy. So, this card could actually be okay as an anti, you know, meta attacker. Then the issue is, unlike the card it's similar to, the Beedrill, the Beedrill was able to be put into play with Mustard. So, you had a way to put it out for free. This card is a stage two that you can't do that with. So, that's, like, the downside of Haxorus, but... It's not terrible by any means. Uh, new Persian here, pretty bad card, nothing too crazy. Um, new Furfro, nothing crazy. Uh, new Beware, uh, Power Charger, 30 damage, search check for basic energy, touches Pokemon, pretty bad. Uh, we've looked at the Ace Specs. I think we're just looking at two extra cards. All right, we did get a brand new tool card here, which is actually not that bad. At the end of your turn, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is in the active spot, you may attach one basic energy from your discard pile 
to that Pokemon. That's technically energy acceleration. And honestly, that isn't bad at all because you can get an extra energy in play. Now it is at the end of your turn, which would have been a little bit more convenient if it worked also at the end of your opponent's turn, right? Because going back in your turn, you wouldn't, you'd, you know, the Pokemon would be powered up, so you'd have to wait an extra turn. But this actually isn't a bad card. Now, I don't know the best deck that could realistically play this. Maybe Dragapult could play it or something like that. If Crushing Hammer ever gets popular again, for whatever reason, this card actually does counter Crushing Hammer, which is quite nice. Um, you could play with, like, Reverum EX, the one that could put a bunch of tools on it. You could play it with Honchkrow V, because those all, you know, have the ability to put multiple of these on. You can put, like, two of these on, and then you can put, like, two energy from your discard pile on that Pokemon, which, honestly, is kind of funny. So, this is, like, a niche card. I don't think it's, like, fantastic, but it isn't bad to have against Crushing Hammer. Maybe it's, like, a good anti-control card. If Control's playing Crushing Hammer, this could be good against Control. Um, it can get vacuumed off, though, which is the downside. It's not bad, though. There are going to be some uses for it, and, I don't know, let me know what uses you think Power Hourglass does have. And then finally, I think we just have uh, one new card to look at here. Yeah, we've got the Nighttime Academy, the brand new stadium, which I actually think could be pretty huge. So once during each player's turn, that player may put a card from their hand on top of their deck. It's a very simple effect, but it's a very strong effect because of a certain card in the format. We all know Iono. This card is a really good Iono counter. Now, stadiums are a little scarce right now. I mean, yeah, there's cards like Artisan, Temple Sinnoh, Jamming Tower. Honestly, though, this card could be a nice new staple for some decks. The best decks I think that could play this are any deck that really does not like any Iono constantly. The one I can think of the most off the top of my head is Lost Box. Lost Box could definitely get some value out of Nighttime Academy. Being able to put a Chorus on top of your deck is really nice. Now, there are other cards in the meta like Judge, Unfair Stamp, and Roxanne that do bypass the effect of this where it's like, doesn't matter. This is only really just here to counter Iono, but honestly, that's fine with me because being able to counter Iono is good I mean, any deck could theoretically play this. Like, if you don't have, like, a core draw engine, just being able to put a card on top of your deck is good because you can just keep chaining supporter cards. But, yeah, this actually could be really big within Lost Zone decks. Lost Zone is very strong. But one of their main weaknesses is that Iono can be very hard to deal with. Sometimes you get Ionoed into a really bad hand and it, you just lose the game because of it. But when you just put supporters on top every time with Nighttime Academy, this actually could be very good for Lost Box. Lost Box used to be very helpful with the Primate Wisdom Oranguru, which did the same thing on a basic Pokemon. On a stadium, obviously, it's not as reliable. It can get bumped easily, but still, the, the effect is really good to play around Iono, and I do like that. And also, this could be playable with Kiram VMAX. I just want to put that out there. Yo, Kiram VMAX just found a new staple stadium, bro. Crazy stuff. All you Kiram VMAX stands out there. Rejoice for the Nighttime Academy. But yeah, nice. It's good for Lost Box. I actually think it's not a bad card. Other decks can play this too, because again, just being able to play around Iono like that is really nice. And those are all the new cards that got revealed and the remainder of the Night Wanderer set. Uh, nothing crazy got revealed. The new Rev Room could be okay. I think the best card, honestly, was the Stadium card, ironically enough. There were some interesting, like, attackers we looked at, like the Zork and the Houndoom, but nothing too crazy got revealed. Uh, but still, I wanted to look at these new cards regardless. And if you all enjoyed this video here on the second channel, make sure to leave a like. And once again, if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. We're on the road to 15k subs now. Um, let me know what you think of these new cards down below. What other uses do you have for that tool card? And let me know what you think of the new stadium card and all that stuff. I'm interested here, and that'll be for me, and I'll catch you on another video here. Bye-bye.